Andrew McGahan for Severa MMA, standing alongside Gary Cook here in Stockholm. And Gary, it's been a while since we spoke to you, but I suppose we'll go back to the most recent big thing in Dublin. I'm sure you were pretty blown away by that. Yeah, I was. Uh, you know, the the event itself was. Uh, it, it was. It, I think it really showed us a whole new side of uh, of UFC and MMA. Uh, we knew there's a fan base there. Uh, when you put Conor McGregor as a headline, you know, people criticised us uh, for for making that decision. But then you've got all the other guys that come along with it. You know, Carl Pendred and Patrick Houlihan, and you know, it, it just it made for a it made for a perfect storm in effect. And uh, Irish fans, Irish fighters, the best uh, MMA promoter in the world. Uh, it's it certainly left a lot of people thinking about it differently. At the start, a lot of people were saying that. Oh, in 2009, we had Dan Henderson and Shogun, and we had guys like that. Do you think you were kind of justified in the car that you put together and how it delivered and how exciting it was from first fight with Paddy Houlihan to last fight with Connor? Yeah, well, you know, Andrew, you and I have talked about this a lot. I, I, I hear a lot of people criticise the cards and the content of the cards. I had dinner with Joe Silver the other night, and we talk about that, where the, the, the issue is, for me, it's a UFC event. You're going to get great fights. Stories begin. We, here we are. We're standing in Stockholm right now. 18 months ago, Conor McGregor made his debut f- with us. Prior to that, he fought in Dublin uh, with another promoter and had 1,100 people. So there's a, there's a machine that UFC creates and promotes. And for me, every event is a great event. You know, tonight we got Gunnar Nelson. Uh, people have criticised that as a main card event. Gunnar Nelson's a great fighter. Rick Story, another great fighter. So the, the UFC is littered with fabulous fighters, and I think there's always a story around the corner. Do you think some of the criticism of this card came from the fact that Swedish fans thought they may have been getting John Jones and Alexander Gustafsson in a stadium? Yeah, of course, and, and I'm sure we're going to have that the next time around when we do a Dublin show. If, uh, if Connor's not on the card, you know, everybody wants Connor now. Uh, you know, he called out, uh, he wanted to be down in Mexico, uh, you know, on the Cain Velasquez bill. So, you know, we're, you always want your best guy. You always want your national guy. Uh, and, and unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. However, let's go back three years. There wasn't an Alexander Gustafsson. There wasn't a Conor McGregor. There wasn't a Ronda Rousey. And now everybody wants uh, everyone and all three of those and more. Speaking of Dublin next year, it's the hot topic. What is the current plan? Um, is it going to be back in the O2? Is it feasible to do a stadium show? Does it depend on the summer? What What are the things that... Let's say it all comes together, it all pulls off, and there's a stadium done in Ireland. What has to be in place before it can be done? I don't. I don't. I think everything's in place. Um, the problem is that we have is uh, you know an outdoor arena in February uh, is never a good idea, or in 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 the uh, first quarter and the last quarter, the fourth quarter. So it's got to be in you know uh, it's got to be from March through September if you're going to do outdoor. Aviva is the best is the best option because obviously Croke is, is pretty busy with hurling and, and Gaelic. So, so you, you, you've, got to, you've got the logistics of the event. You've then got to watch Connor's progression. Uh, you know, he's probably going to have to fight. You know, we've got, uh, coming up, we've got Swanson and Edgar. We've got uh, Aldo and, uh, and Mendes. So, you know, everybody's, that's, that's an that's a interesting division right now. But we could be ending up here with like this super flyweight uh, pathway where, you know, uh, within the next two or three fights, you, you know, Connor's, Connor's fighting for a world title. The, the, the wonderful opportunity would be if he wins the world title and then he defends it in his hometown. Because Dana actually said yesterday that, I think it was to kind of say, the reason he's not fighting Sanchez is because if Aldo beats Mendes, the logical thing is to give him the title shot because Aldo's already beaten Edgar and Swanson. So that could happen maybe sometime early 15. With the, I, I just wanted to know, because I heard there may have been some sort of call last night about the Aviva or like all systems go, let's go ahead, let's try lock it down. Well, we, you know, the way that it works for us is, and there's, you know, Dana and Joe Silver and Lorenzo, uh, they've been doing this a lot longer than I have or, or we have. Our job in the region is to, is to put forward a case. Uh, we've put forward a case to the senior executives in, uh, in, in Las Vegas, uh, and it involves what we think is the best route to go. Uh, and it includes Connor in Dublin, uh, and, it, and it also includes Connor 
uh, you know, in uh, fighting for a title. Uh, but but sometimes things happen differently, yeah. and we've seen injuries, and even Connor, you know, went out with an injury. Uh, but again, everybody's con- concern is his rise, his sudden rise, his quick rise. Everybody says he can't wrestle. Everybody says, you know, this is, you know, he's going to meet his uh, a, an important. Uh, fighter and it's going to be an undoing of him nobody can say that nobody can nobody can uh, predict that but right now uh, what a wonderful situation to be in I, I said to Dana last night these are good problems to have let's say everything goes wrong Connor gets injured in March and but you still think there's the potential to do the stadium but it's later in the year there's only one venue in the UK and Ireland that has a roof it's the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff is that a backup plan uh, we've looked at that as well you know and uh, you know, we've seen uh, boxing events at Wembley Stadium, 80,000 people. Uh, we don't see a reason why that wouldn't happen. I actually went to the event uh, to watch Connor's fight in Las Vegas from Dublin. A lot of the questions I was asking was, would, would, would people travel? Well, as you know better than anybody, uh, the Irish are the best travelers in the world when it comes to sports events. So I don't, I don't think it matters where Connor fights. Uh, but, but if you want to do a stadium event, I still think the Aviva's the best shout. When it, we spoke about it before about a European format of tough. Is there any update on that? Because I know there's a lot of Irish pros, maybe with four and zero or three and zero, and good records that would be eligible for tough. Have been asking about this. Yeah, the the, the, the tough model itself is a uh, you know it's a twelve week reality show. They're not they're not inexpensive to create, and the way that we manage our production, they're high levels of uh, of, of production value. So uh, it, they're expensive to pull together. So you don't do them lightly. Uh, we, we're having conversations with people in Russia. We're having conversations with people in the Middle East, uh, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, so I think, I think it would be fair to say we will start filming a tough uh, or something similar along a reality television series uh, within the next 12 months. But where it is, we're not quite sure yet because there's still people out there looking. There was some confusion earlier on this year about the amount of European events. Was there not supposed to be one in the like November, December, this part of the year, or something has fallen through? Yeah, we got uh, we got sidetracked a little bit because uh, even here in Stockholm, you know, everybody was expecting uh, a Gustafsson. Uh, event. We even looked at an outdoor arena here in uh, in Stockholm, and so our schedule got a little bit uh, flustered. But our last event, if you remember, was going to be Istanbul, in Turkey, and 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 at the time uh, when we were finalising all the deals, there was some unrest there, political unrest. Um, we just thought it was probably not the best idea. And of course, you know, there's a new issue that we've never had to deal with. You know, you think about going to these countries. You know, there's a market there. You know, there's fans there. And then you've got to deal with the uh, political and economic situation in these countries too. Two quick things before we let you go. A lot of Irish fans as well. The, like You have to kind of strike when the iron is hot now because Connor is the hottest prospect. So the Aviva is the logical thing. But from that, you can't really... like Maybe Crow Park is feasible in the next two years. But Irish fans are kind of worried like you're going to go up and then it's just going to go back down. It's going to be the O2. But the main thing that they're worried about is that um, I know there's only so many EMEA dates per year. And London is one of the staples on the calendar, as is Berlin, Stockholm now, and Dublin. Like, is there any risk of Dublin maybe falling off from the the guaranteed slots a year, and you could be going back to maybe every eighteen to twenty four months for a show? Well, it's interesting because I detect uh, in your in your question there, there's a little bit of a uh, this is how it's always been done. Uh, and if you remember two years ago, we were running this business here in Europe, seven years we were running it. And uh, I went to Lorenzo and said, let's do it differently. Let's get our own commentators. Let's put our own ring uh, announcer. Let's do our own television deals in, in, in some of these markets. And let's, let's create uh, UFC Emea. Uh, we've done that. And I think we've done a very good job. I think the team that we put together and we've built an organization in London have done a great job. And I always say to Lorenzo and Dana, you know, what we did, what got us here might not be the way to get us there. So what if there was a fight, uh, an event in London? And on the same night there was an event in Los Angeles and the winners uh, of, of, a, of a fight uh, of a weight classification in LA the winner of that fought the winner of a, the same weight classification in London all of a sudden it's a different landscape and we've seen uh, fight pass uh, you know our, our UFC fight pass product to start to develop so I, I don't I don't think there's anything to stop us now doing whatever we think is the right thing to do um, and now we've got fighters and talent as well so I think you've got to keep uh, keep your eye on this space for a moment because it's going to change. And finally, the question that everyone's been wondering: Connor did absolutely phenomenal one uh, numbers in Ireland. Three hundred seventeen hundred thousand people watched him on tape delay on three on Monday yeah. night. 
the ones that we don't know is BT Sport. Uh, I heard a rumour that it was less than impressive on the live broadcast, but very, very impressive on the tape delay. Yeah, that's exactly the same thing. You know, we see uh, we see that uh, our relationship with television networks all around the world, they, they, the numbers vary by virtue of how they approach it, how they market it, what they see. But the thing that shocks uh, BT is when, we, I mean, at the same time, we ran a, uh, when we did our London 02 event last year, uh, Channel 5 had over a million viewers on a live free-to-air proposition. So I, I think there's an appetite out there. I think it's a different type of uh, subscriber. It's a different uh, there's a different consumer or a different fan that's watching BT uh, but, but the great news is that uh, the guys in Ireland uh, blew the doors off with the uh, and it just shows you the fans the fans will go anywhere to watch it okay Gary we appreciate the time thanks, thanks very much take care